In this problem, we do not need to solve for all truss members. We only need to solve for the forces in member BC, DC, and DE. Therefore, we're going to use method of sections instead of method of joints. Um, normally, we use method of joints if we have to solve for all the members. So in this case, we're going to use an imaginary cut to cut through all these three members that we are interested in solving. And we're going to pick either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, and then treat the problem as a rigid body equilibrium problem and solve for our unknowns. So inevitably, we would have to solve for some support reactions because we already have three unknowns here. And for every 2D rigid body free body diagram, we can only set up three equations and solve for three unknowns. However, we will have to already know one of the support reactions. So in this case, um, we can solve for the support reactions at point A easily by summarizing the by treating the entire structure as one as one um, sup uh, system, and then we will have one support here at point A and two unknown support reactions at uh, let's call it point F here. Um, so we can summarize the moment about point F. And from there, we can solve for the force AY. Um, as you can see, this is a, a structure that only has vertical support uh, applied forces, so 100 Newton, 100 Newton. And th therefore, there's not going to be any horizontal support reactions at point F. And further, we can see that the force, the applied loadings are symmetrical. Therefore, AY and FY must be the same. Therefore, um, AY and FY must be the same. They add together to a 600 Newton total. So from here, we can easily determine the AY to be 300 Newton. But if that's not obvious to you, you can always treat the entire structure as one rigid body system and summarize the moment about point F and solve for A you will get to the same conclusion. So now, with that said, we're going to pick our left-hand side um, to be our system. So the left-hand side segment, we're just going to do our best drawing it here. And by the way, all these um, shorter members, A, B, B, D, C, D, is, BC, etc., etc., they are all of the same length of 60 centimeter, which means that these angles are 45 degree angles. And then we will have a little bit of BC. Remember, BC has already been cut. A little bit of um, DE, a little bit of um, CD as well. So this is the free body diagram of the left segment. On this left segment, the known forces are 100 Newton here, 300 Newton here. Therefore, we can combine these two. So the combination of 100 Newton downwards and 300 Newton upwards, that will be 200 Newton upwards. Another 100 Newton here. So these are the known external forces. And then we have, by doing this imaginary cut, we have exposed our internal unknown forces, FDE, FCD, and FBC. So I draw the directions of these three forces as tension forces, because um, by sign convention, a positive is tension. Um, and now we have completed the free body diagram of this rigid body, even though it's only a segment. Um, and we have three unknowns, and now we're ready to solve for all these three unknowns. So conventionally, we will write two force equations and a moment about an arbitrary point. Um, but when we're using method of sections, we need to pay attention to the relation of um, forces being inter intersecting with each other. Um, therefore, in this example, we can see that because FDE and FCD, they intersect at point D. Therefore, if we write the resultant moment equation about point D, 
then FD and FCD do not have moment about point D. They do not show up in this equation. We will only have one unknown, which is FBC, that will show up on this equation. So FBC creates uh, counterclockwise moment about point D. Point D is right here. We can always go back to the original image for a better uh, visual illustration. So about point D, that's going to be positive. FBC with a moment arm. Moment arm is this much right here. That is a 60 centimeter. And then we would have um, 200 Newton. That's a known force that's creating a clockwise rotation about point D. Therefore, that's going to be negative 200 times moment arm is the same 60 centimeter. And then the 100 Newton force passes through point D, therefore creating no moment about point D. So that's all we have. And again, counterclockwise is considered a positive. So from here, we can solve for FBC. FBC equals to positive 200 Newton. And positive indicates that our originally assumed direction is correct. Therefore, this is a tension force. And then notice that force FCD and FBC, the, they also intersect, they intersect at this point right here, which is point C. And even though point C is not a physical point that's on our free body diagram, we can still summarize the moment about it. We can summarize the moment about any abstract point that we want. So in this case, it's probably better to go back to the original image for the relation. So you can see that FCD and FBC both pass through point C, therefore they do not create moment about point C. FD is the only one that has moment about point C. Uh, but how do you determine the moment arm? Well, the moment arm can be determined by this right here, this distance right here. Um, as you can see, these two are of the same length, which is going to be square root of BC because this is a 45 degree angle. Um, and then, because they are the same, therefore, these two angles are also the same, and they are going to be 67.5 degree each. Okay, so with that knowledge, this moment arm, let's call it uh, C, it is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, let's call it C, G, this distance C, G can be determined as, so, 60 centimeter, that's BC, divided by cosine 45 degree, which is the same as saying 60 times square root of 2, and then multiply by 67.5 um, sine of that. Okay, so that's the moment arm for force FDE. All right, with that said, resultant moment about point C. The 200 Newton force is creating a clockwise moment about point C, so that's negative 200 times the moment arm is uh, 2 times 60 centimeter, it's this much. And then the 100 Newton force is creating counterclockwise moment, so 100 times with a moment arm of 60, and lastly, FDE is creating clockwise rotation, so negative FDE. The moment arm is determined by this equation, so 60 divided by cosine 45 degree times sine 67.5 degree equals to zero. At this point, you probably already realize that this 60 can be canceled out from all terms in this equation. Either way, you can solve for FDE. In this case, FDE equals to negative 229 Newton. Negative sign indicates that it's a compressive force. So let me clean up this image a little bit. So there is an option to solve the remaining unknown, which is um, FCD, using another moment equilibrium equation. Because for these three forces, 
They are not parallel with each other at all. Therefore, FDE and FBC they must also intersect. So you can extend them, and then they will intersect at this point right here. Let's call it H, and this the distance from H. Um, to A, for example, can be determined not too difficultly because right here, this is a 67.5 degree and this is a 90 degree and we know CE, CE also equals to 60 over cosine 45 degree or 60 times square root of 2. So you can actually summarize the moment about point H. Um, if you do not want, and from that equation, you can solve for the remaining unknown, which is um, FCD. However, if you say you don't want to deal with the um, trigonometry, then we can write another force equilibrium equation. Let's call it, write it along the x direction, because along the x direction, 100 and 200 Newton forces, they don't have a um, component along the x direction. So along the x direction, we have FBC, which is already determined to be 200 Newton. All right, FDE is, so FDE is in this direction of 229 Newton. And this angle right here is 67.5 minus the 45 degree angle. In other words, let me draw it here. It's easier to see. So this angle right here, is going to be overall 67.5 minus this 45 degree angle. So that's going to be a 22.5 degree angle. Therefore, along the x direction, we have the negative FDE 229 times cosine 22.5 degree. And then plus FCD, our remaining unknown, with a cosine 45 degree um, horizontal component, and that equals to zero. So from here, we can solve for FCD to be positive 17.2 Newton, which is a tensile force. So at this point, we have solved for all the three truss member forces that we were asked to solve. And um, as you can see, we choose to write two moment equilibrium equations about two points where forces intersect with each other so that in each of the moment equation, we only have one unknown. So we can solve for the unknowns uh, relatively easily.